Hello everyone and welcome to Los Angeles. We're here at the LA Convention Center and this is episode number 21 of the Display Show. Display Week 2023 is taking place inside and we're gonna go take a look at some of the hottest exhibits here on display for the show. Let's go. Well, we're here at the E-Ink booth, and uh, this is Brian Chan. He's also uh, associated with the Bay Area SID. He's actually the chair. We're here to take a look at some of their cool displays, especially the Spectra 6 we wanted to talk about. So Brian, why don't you tell us about the Spectra 6 and what we're looking at here? Yeah, absolutely. Spectra 6 we're really excited about. It's a new uh, film product from E-Ink. It's a full color film product. It has multiple pigments inside a cell and that gives the material to be able to change to almost any color to provide photorealistic quality images. And it has all of the same characteristics that E-Ink is known for, such as ultra low power and sunlight readability. But I think this is the first time uh, people are seeing such vivid colors and image quality from, from an E-Ink display. It is for me. I, I look at this display and I go, wow, are you kidding? And, and this is still, uh, pigment-based particle electrophoretic type display? That's correct. It's, uh, it's multiple pigments in a fluid, and these, you can think about like mixing a paint can. So our film is like a million paint cans, and any one of these paint cans you could mix up with these pigments, and it could be any color in any one of these little cells. So it is still electrophoretic, um, uh, and yeah, our team worked a long time. It's been a dream of many people to, uh, to reach this point. You know, I'm, I'm looking at these displays, and I can't believe the clarity uh, and, and the number of colors that seem to be available. It's, it's quite impressive. So I uh, really appreciate your bringing it here to the Display Week 2023 show. Oh, we're really excited to be here. And we're really honored to be part of uh, SID. Do you want to say anything more about the display? Sure, yeah. The display is targeting for uh, the signage applications. So E-Ink is known mainly for e-readers and perhaps uh, retail price labels. Uh, but for Spectra 6, we're really targeting the large format signage and hopefully to be able to show advertisements or other types of promotion. I noticed that the, the display is tiled here, but the tiles themselves are pretty big. Uh, how, how large can a single tile get? Yeah, so these tiles here are about 25.3 inches in diagonal. Um, there's talk about going larger, such as 32 or 42, and maybe perhaps in the future we'll do 55 or even, even beyond. So there's nothing inherently difficult about the technology that prevents it from being scaled to those larger sizes, is that right? That's correct. From a technology point, not, not, uh, not anything more than the economics of, of going large in the display world. Well, it's really beautiful, and I'm so glad you guys brought it here. And uh, thank you for E-Ink's long-term support, not only of the SID exhibits, but also of the iZone, uh, which is fantastic. Thank no, you so thank much. No, thank you. Brian. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Brian. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Well, here we are at Display Week 2023 LG booth, and there are some great technologies that we're going to show. Uh, I'm fortunate to be with Pak Ji Jung, who has come from Seoul, is going to talk about some of the highlight technologies. One of the talks that I went to uh, today, earlier today, was paper 25.1, where Dr. Shin gave an explanation of LG Display's new MLED technology, and this is the latest generation, I guess it's third generation. This is the third generation. So why don't you tell us about this? What we're in front of right now is the 65 inch 4K OLED mm -hmm. meta technology, including the micro lenses that are being shown here. So right, let so us know. Let me briefly explain the meta technology, which is our third generation OLED technology. It really transcends the second generation EX technology to achieve what we call a natural reality. So we apply two new innovative technologies called Micro Lens Array, as well as an algorithm called Meta Booster. So by applying MLA, uh, we really improve the overall brightness by up to 60%, and also the viewing angle it has been widened uh, up to 30%. So this one right here is the mainstream size, which is 65 inch. And this is actually 60% brighter than its predecessor of the same size. It's a beautiful display. I just am so impressed by how much better they get every year. Right. And 
By the way, I really want to thank LG for being such a great sponsor of SID and for bringing this large exhibit with new innovative technology. Thank you. So this is the 77-inch AK OLED, and there are 33 million pixels on the screen, and each one of them is emitting light by itself to create such realistic uh, image quality. And in terms of AK lineup, we have 77-inch and 88-inch. Is this actually available for sale? Uh, this is available for sale. You can buy it now? Yes. At least in Korea? Uh, I believe so. Okay. <laughs> you need to check on it. <laughs> wow. So again, uh, our new meta technology as well as 8K resolution really bring this sharp image quality. And now here we have the 18-inch rollable display. And why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so this product really maximizes portability by rolling an 18-inch panel with a curvature radius of 20R. And we call it a display on demand because we can use it in three modes. So let me show you each one of them. So right now, we took out uh, the entire screen like this to watch a variety of contents. But we can hide the screen like this. And when you hide the screen, you can use it as a speaker. Oh, this is like a little sound bar now. Right. Also, you can choose to play it around by taking out only part of the screen like this to access uh, the necessary information, like weather, date, and so on. Is this actually going to ship? Is this uh, This is a prototype. Started? This is yeah. a prototype. Mm -hmm. OK. So now we're looking at a stretchable display. This is something that's really different something new and different. So Ms. Park, can you tell us about what we're looking at here? All right, so this is the world's first 12-inch stretchable display, and it can be extended, folded, and twisted uh, without any distortion or damage, so it can be used in various industries. And actually, to the left, we have a prototype for a vehicle center fascia, and you can actually come close and experience it yourself. <laughs> really, so I can like touch this? Yes. So it provides tactile experience similar to traditional analog buttons. And press play. It will play the music like this. That's pretty cool. So as far as I understand, this is micro LED technology. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told earlier. Yes. Uh, so we know now that LGD is working on micro LED, um, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. This part, I'd like to thank you very much for giving us thank the demo so of LG Display uh, work in progress. It's great progress and very exciting what you've shown thank us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we're here at the BOE booth. They're really highlighting three different types of technologies. One is something that they call ADS Pro. Another is uh, F OLED, which stands for Flexible OLED. And what we're looking at right now is part of their product line called Alpha MLED. And this particular product is a 163-inch LTPS chip-on-glass mini-LED display, 163 inches. And if I've got it right, it's a 4K display. And it's kind of hard to show in the video, but it is so bright and colorful and huge. Uh, it's constructed by tiles uh, and quite an impressive display. So this is the 30th anniversary of BOE, and they're celebrating that. Uh, they've brought a wonderful exhibit to SID this year. What we're looking at right now is part of their ADS Pro line, and they're marketing it as UB cell, which stands for ultra black cell. And the point of this whole demo is to try to figure out which TV is an LCD and which TV is an OLED. It's a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, and honestly speaking, it's really tough to tell which is which. They're very close, but the LCD is actually on the left. And uh, congrats to BOE for a very deep black 65-inch uh, UB cell TV. And so now, the third component of BOE's demonstrations are the flexible OLED and rollable OLED, what they call F-OLED technology. And I'm here with Yue Lei, yeah. who is going to tell us a little bit about it. Uh, so this is our rollable product. Uh, this is type A, it's about uh, 10 inches. And this is type B, about uh, 
17 inches. And these are rollable? Yeah, we can, we can, sh I can show you, show for you. Yeah. Just like this. Wow. Oh. How big is the display actually then? Seven, 17, 17 inches. inches. Yeah. Well, we're here at Samsung's booth at SID Display Week 2023. And for the first time in the history of the display show, we have a repeat guest. Oh, it's, it's an honor. Thank Chirag you. Shaw. Yeah. Except this time we're in person. Last time it was uh, remote. And yeah, I'm so right. happy. I'm so happy that we can do this together. True. So, it's Chirag, always better. It's really great to see you. and. Wanted to go over some of the highlights that we have here in Samsung's booth. I'm looking at this screen and realizing, oh, this is a 77-inch QD OLED, um, 4K. Yes, 4K. You want to tell us about it? Sure. So this is, you know, part of our second-generation QD OLED that we um, was an upgrade to the first-generation 2022 model. So this is the all-new QD OLED. Uh, of course, you notice the size, the 77-inch. Uh, the other, there are three other upgrades that the new generation comes with. It has a re-engineered blue OLED layer, which is 33% brighter. It is also more power efficient. And thirdly, it, and it has a two, almost two times more durability. So it has increased lifetime, more power efficient, along with the 33% brighter, which is not just white brightness, is the total holistic color brightness. So that's what this is uh, all about, the 77-inch QD OLED. And I'm looking at it, it's beautiful display, and now that we can see the black level, uh, it's quite impressive. Um, is it built on the same fab? That you're now you're, you're getting 77-inch off of the, the original that's size? That's correct. Fab. Wow. It's built on the same fab. So before the maximum size, I guess, was 65 inches. And now we've got the 77-inch. You guys have scaled inch. up. Okay. Um, well, it's beautiful and really appreciate seeing it. Oh, thank you. And by the way, this has also been uh, awarded the Display of the Year uh, by SID. Yeah, congratulations on oh, winning uh, the uh, Display of the Year Award, um, one of four awards this year. Yes, thank you. Yes, next I'd like to move over to uh, the gaming display because you have a yes. new larger size there too. That's Actually, right. Actually, can you tell us about it now? Sure. So I think the I mentioned the 77 inch, there are two new sizes this year. In the monitors, we've introduced the 49-inch ultra-wide uh, 32 by 9 aspect ratio, uh, which is kind of like having two 27 inches side by side. So it's uh, you know it's it's a phenomenal gaming experience, but also like for gamers who are also streaming, or if you're a gamer and you're doing some other work or browsing on the side, it's the whole package you know giving you more of a cockpit feel with all the benefits of QD OLED um, that we've discussed, but also. Uh, the new model, the, the 2023 model, is capable of 240 hertz max refresh rate, oh, wow. uh, along with the color and the uh, deep blacks and brightness that we had. Uh, so it's like a higher refresh rate, better, uh, you, I mentioned the second generation QD OLED, uh, as well as the form factor, which is a 49 inch um, curved display. So is this also the higher durability material that you were yes. talking about? Okay. Yes. Uh, so all so, the improvements that are in the 77 inch are now in this display. Not, yes, that is right. And all our displays, uh, all sizes have now moved to the new um, higher quality material uh, or the new improved material that we have now introduced. So all panels, 55, 65, 77 on the TVs and 34, 49 on the monitors by default have the updated uh, technology and advanced material as standard feature. Fantastic. So now over here, we have the Samsung Flex Notebook display. And Chirag, why don't you tell us about this panel? Sure. Yeah, this is a really exciting stuff. So what you have here is this, you know, monitor size PC display. Uh, you could have like basically have it like a tablet. And when you want to have your keyboard, you can just open up and the bottom display can be transformed into a keypad. Uh, this is the first gen, but our goal is in the second gen, we will also add some haptic feedback to kind of give you the fu fuller experience of having a tablet that can convert into either a wide display as a tablet, but also uh, be like a notebook PC. So this actually has a touch sensor then that uh, 
in addition to having the display. That's the plan. I mean, right now it doesn't, but uh, that is what we are ho we are planning to add in terms of, yeah, it will have the touch uh, sensor of, yes. Will that be on the top half also in case yes. somebody wants to point? Yeah, so the, the, the whole thing is going to be like built as a tablet, which can also be uh, converted into a note PC. So yeah, you'll have the touch sensitivity, yes. The thing that's impressive to me is that this is a, this is not a small panel. This is a 17.3 inch panel. Yeah. Uh, it looks like 1920 by 2560. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. The interesting thing is also the uh, folding radius. I was going to point that out. Yeah. 1.2R is very, very it's tight bend. Like flat. You know, yeah, it's like you shut it on. If you have a foldable phone today, there's a slight bulge, but with 1.2, you're not going to, it's going to be like flat. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty good uh, form factor uh, user experience. Very cool. In our final demo, at Samsung is the Flex in and out Chirag, why don't you tell us about that? Well, let me just show it to you. So what's amazing about this is, as you can see, this is your kind of form, form factor for this. You can fold it in, which is like the in, but also it gives you a full 360 fold. And I want you to look at the actual curvature. You know, it's a 1.5 radius, so you can see how flat it gets. I remember doing the demo at CES 10 years ago <laughs> where I was first demonstrating the possibility of this technology. And uh, yeah, uh, to see that it's come this far is really impressive. So Shrog, thank you for appearing once again on the display show. It's great it's, to see you. Oh, uh, thank you and it was my pleasure. In Thanks. person. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brian. One of the aspects of Display Week that's very important is something that's called the iZone. So in addition to all the technical talks and the exhibits all over the show floor, the iZone is short for Innovation Zone. And this is a place where small companies can show prototypes of new technologies haven't hit the market yet. They get this space to exhibit for free. And there are about 40 different iZone exhibits, so we can't show all of them to you, but I'm gonna show you two that are very significant, uh, starting with the winner. So the winner of this year's iZone is from Sun Diode. And I'm here with James Kim, who's gonna tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. This is a triple stack micro LED display that you guys have developed, which is incredible for a startup. And uh, why don't you tell us what we're looking at here on the table? Yeah, so what we're looking at on the table is, a, is, a, is our very first demo of, uh, of the stacked RGB micro LED display, which consists of, in this case, red, green, blue uh, sub layers, uh, uh, sub layers that make up a pixel. And the pixel size in this case is 100 micron. Um, we have shown this in order to tell the world basically the stacked RGB architecture works. Um, it's, uh, we think that it's, uh, it's something that that is you know, difficult to achieve at very small scale at first, but it's easier at large, I mean, 100 micron size. We, so we achieved that first, and then we're well on our way to show the world very, very small pixels of the same technology, the stacked RGB, so that we can use them for uh, applications such as AR, MR, um, VR, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. This is fantastic. What was the hardest thing about putting together this prototype? This prototype, um, just the fact that we're sort of going into uncharted test territory where we stack multiple junctions and they haven't been connected and, and, and drive them. And we, we use CMOS to drive the, the display, uh, getting, getting CMOS to work with the, the display panel so that they, they talk to each other basically, and give you all the colors that you, you see here. Uh, I would say that was the most difficult part. Uh, there was quite a uh, birth pain, if you will, coming up with the actual panel itself. Uh, again, it's something that, that hasn't been done before, and we, we, we did that. And so, yeah, that would be the thing that was most difficult for us. Okay, we're joined by Stephen Lee also, so thanks for yeah. being here, and congratulations Thank Thank on you. winning. Yeah. And thanks for inviting us. Yeah, yeah thanks for being here. Yeah. So you're also running this uh, little video here. What are, what are we looking at? This is the, the essence of what we do, which is drive a single pixel and show all three colors in sequence. Uh, just by essentially commanding it to do that. So we, we, um, we drive each 
subpixel independently, but they're completely overlapped, as you can see here. Um, and so the light sort of comes out pre-mixed or pre-integrated or whatever. Instead of our eye doing the integration side by side pixels, we, we have light that's coming out mixed. Well, thank you so much for the demo, uh, and congratulations again. Okay. Thank you very thank you. much. Another great iZone honoree is from NHK, and I'm here with Kenichiro Masaoka, uh, also with Johan Bergquist, who is a consultant who has worked closely with Dr. Masaoka. And for those of you who don't know, Dr. Masaoka is actually the father of BT2020. He helped to define the primary coordinate locations of BT2020. And he's done a lot of work with us, all three of us, on the International Committee for Display Metrology, where we've developed the IDMS. In previous episodes, we've talked about section 5.32, which is color volume. And as I've also discussed, color volume is quite a bit different from a chromaticity plot. And for decades, the industry has quantified color characterization by using a chromaticity diagram but it's not a characterization of color capability because it's missing the all-important axis of luminance. What Dr. Masaoka has developed here is a system that can implement IDMS Section 5.32 and very quickly so. IDMS Section 5.32 requires the acquisition of 602 different color patches. And I understand, Dr. Masaoka, your system can acquire all those images or all those patch readings in under 60 seconds. Yes. Yeah, would you go ahead and hit play and show and, and, and describe what's going on on the screen here? Okay, yeah, uh, this is the software I developed and I'm using the colorimeter. It's very fast and accurate. And all, uh, all we need to do is just push this play button here. Go ahead. Here, yeah, it's measuring the different colors and you can see the progress of the, this, the measurement here. So on this screen, it looks like we're tracing out point by point along each of the RGB axes, and it's getting all 602 points of the surface cube yeah. uh, on all six faces of that cube. Is that right? Yeah, yes. here you can see the cube. Yeah. yeah, can you show the cube? I wonder if we can pick that up on the camera, what's actually the pro progress. And there it goes, point by point, and you can see the color changing on the patch. It's being measured as it goes through all of these measurements. So we'll let it go ahead and do that. And then the output of this is what, a CGATS file? Yeah, this, uh, this can export a CGATS file of the 602 colors. With all it the also plots directly yeah, here direct in the system. In the yeah, the it, it's rings. plotting directly. So this is an XYY, or yeah, XY cap Y diagram uh, that shows the volumetric color, uh, which is really cool. But this uh, can um, render the gamma rings of this, this, this spray. Yes, uh, and, then, and then the output will be a combination of the color volume measurement and uh, intersection of uh, the color volumetrically, yeah. not area which is misleading, uh, but actually volumetrically, and then importantly for 2D visualization of gamut using the gamut rings that yeah. are described. Now, uh, this yeah. finish, so you can plot the uh, gamut rings. There. And that's actually the gamut ring plot yeah. of this device here? Yeah. Yes, this is the gamut rings of this display. Wow. So this is the actual gamut rings. Can you show these gamut rings uh, intersecting a reference? Uh, yes, uh, I choose um, DCI-P3 here. Sure, DCI-P3 is uh, becoming a very common reference. And so, I don't know if we can see this on camera, but what I'm looking at are the areas where color coverage is very good here at lower luminance levels, but at higher luminance levels, these gray areas show, they represent where it cannot completely meet the reference. Is that right? Yes, that right. Okay. I think we can also show some imagery here. That, that is so cool, by the way, to be able to characterize a display in 60 seconds. Uh, is phenomenal. Yeah, one this works with many instruments. So we just have two instruments here, but it actually works at the moment with more than five instruments. So you, okay. you can use this with, with your favorite instrument, basically. And then all the software to do this is open source. It's free. 
I'm not sure. I'm not, sorry, not the acquisition uh, software. No, not the acquisition yeah, software, yeah. but but the conversion yeah, this uh, from the Seagats to oh, yeah, it's a yeah. Bit open. the Seagats to yeah. uh, volume and gamut rings is. We have now uh, GitHub code for yeah. that purpose. Yes. GitHub code is available. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and in a couple of months there will be an IEC standard published, which includes this app for uh, gamma rings. That is 62977-3-5. Yes, right. correct. So not only ICDM and the IDMS, but also uh, IEC standard. And also yeah. color volume appears as well in uh, other it, IEC standards. Yeah, such CIE as, as well. So. CIE as CIE well. CIE 246. Yeah, well, it was the CIE in 1976 who said, color is 3D, it's not 2D. Yeah. So I challenge anyone on the chromaticity diagram to point out where brown is, or where can I find, for instance, uh, forest green or rust color. Um, those colors don't appear, nor do bright fireworks either. Yeah. Uh, let's come around over here and take a look at this. So now we're looking at these images on this, uh, this screen here, on this tablet. What are we looking at? Okay, so we have uh, measured or um, two different laser displays. Uh, they both use RGB lasers, and here we see the chromaticity diagram of one of them. Uh, and it looks we'll, quite large. Yeah, uh, this is actually 91% BT 2020. 91 percent overlap, so it's it's pretty good. So, so if I intersect this with the BT 2020 diagram, 91 percent coverage, yeah, supposedly by, by area. By area. Yeah. yeah, here you can see the gray triangle is BT2020, right? Yeah. So if we look at the other laser display, almost the same. The green is a bit uh, longer wavelengths here, but almost the same chromaticities. This is 88% by area. So now if we look at these two displays so in volume... They roughly have the same yeah, coverage in area. Yeah, roughly have the same time. coverage here. That's correct. So uh, if we look at the... We can look at this one first by volume. So, yeah, this has 86% of the BT2020 volume. So I see a little bit of weakness in yellow, and uh, yet magenta is very good. Uh, maybe slight missing in cyans, but barely at all. So 88% compared to about the same in area terms. Uh, so this is a very good color capable display. Yeah, but at. you can see here the arrows point in the wrong direction. So this diagram contains a lot of information, not just the volume, but also the hue. The hue angles are preserved from C-Lab. So what you can see in this diagram is that green is a bit off here, so is blue, but red is the red hue is correct. So. so if there were no hue shift, this blue would be aligned with the peak of the reference. Yeah. But, and, and likewise for green. Uh, but you can see the hue angle shift yeah, a little exactly. bit. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at the other one now. Uh, okay. So, so this one was supposedly 90% coverage. Yeah, almost in area uh, the same chromaticities and same coverage in, by area. But now you can see it has only 48% of the BT 2020 volume. Uh, so it's really misleading to look at just the area. <laughs> Yeah, you get the wrong information. Yeah. So this is what we expect that reporters and uh, CNET and ratings and all the other evaluation folks uh, and maybe even manufacturers yeah. uh, will be reporting. They'll be using volumetric terms instead of the CIE chart uh, going uh, forward. Yeah, also in this case you can see a hue shift here. So. Every, yes. All the information is in one single graph, so it's really a useful concept. So the whole rings diagram concept, it's very, very hard to put a 3D diagram that has all the information in 2D. Yeah, actually what we did so far before the rings, we, you had to rotate the diagram like this. Uh, so it's much more intuitive to look at the gamma yeah, You can get all the information that way, yeah. but you have to rotate it through all perspectives yeah. so to be able to see what's going on. So here you can see, see the blue on. is actually outside BT-2020. That means it has more capability yeah. than yeah. prescribed by BT-2020. Looking at the gamma rings, it's much more intuitive, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it's a fantastic demo, and congratulations, Dr. Masa Oka, on uh, being honored by the iZone committee and for bringing this great prototype uh, system uh, to SID this year.
So Dr. Masaoka, this is another use for gamut rings. This appears to be plotting the content that's coming from the imagery. Is that what's going on? Yes, um, this system shows the color distribution of each frame of the input video signal in real time on gamut rings. Okay. So this has a lot more broad spectrum color from the sky scene, and that's why we see all portions illuminated. Yes, um, in the conventional color scopes, like XY chromatic diagram, vector scope, waveform, and histogram, uh, are losing many information of color. But gamma rings, uh, we can see the difference of uh, lightness level and hue angle and uh, uh, saturation. Yes. Yeah, what happens if we, for instance, lower the luminance? Yes, um, let me try. Or increase it. Yes. Uh, if I change the luminance level here, the distribution shrinks. Yeah, not only that, but there's color shift, too. Yes, but in the XY chromaticity diagram, we cannot see anything here because the chromaticity diagrams uh, doesn't show the important luminance axis. Well, the chromaticity diagram is just one slice. Yes. It's a projection. Yeah, project it's a projection, oh, it's a projection of all the luminances looking from the top. Yes. Yeah. So this system is, uh, uh, can show the more information of colors in real time. And can anybody set up this, this kind of a setup to evaluate their displays and to look at the input information? Uh, not yet. I developed this uh, system last month. It's a, it's a very, very fast time to demonstrate it, this system. Well, it's cool. These are new tools that nobody has ever very seen before. New tool, yes. Yeah, and that's what the iZone's all about. Yeah. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. We're here at the TCL CSOT booth, and I'm speaking with Dr. Wei Ren Xiao, who is the person who has led the development of inkjet printable OLEDs here at TCL CSOT. And what we're looking at here kind of looks like a coffee table, but it isn't at all. It's the world's first 65-inch 8K inkjet printed foldable OLED display. And Dr. Chow, you're going to tell us about it. And before you do, I'm going to mention that last night you were the recipient of the prestigious SID Peter Brody Award. So congratulations on Thank that. You. Thank you. That's a fantastic Thank achievement. You. You. Uh, and I'm so impressed by the work of your team. Can you tell us about what we're looking at here? Yeah, we, uh, I'm working on inkjet printing this technology for more than 10 years. And this time we bring all our uh, printing, uh, uh, the demos here. Uh, so for this one, it's a flexible, like a foldable uh, TV. And we can, you can see that it's hiding in the table and then once we open it, it will become a real TV. It will come up, you can see that? Yes. Yeah. How, how did you create the inkjet printable technology to do this? Uh, actually, inkjet printing is pretty simple. It's the same as the printer we use in our office. So we just print the, uh, the different color to different positions and to form the R, G, B, and these three colors and form the, uh, the, the display. Well, I, I think it's so cool. I mean, do you have to have individual wells for the... Uh... Yeah, we need to build a well first yeah. and then put the, 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 the ink into the wall. Well. And you have ink for each of red, yeah. green, and blue? Yes, yes, three individuals. Can you say about how many uh, candela per how meter many? squared we're getting out of this? Candela per square meter? Yes. It's about, for this one, it's about 200 candela per centimeter. Oh, the screen looks beautiful. I can't yeah. believe it. We just saw this thing unfold yeah. from a, you, you from a cabinet. The, yeah, you can see the contrast. The, the picture quality is really, really good. Even in this bright environment, the blacks are, are, are deep. Deep, yeah. 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 So you can see a beautiful kind of picture here. It's more like a painting. Yes. Yeah, like a, a painting, you know, or, uh, you know. It, you cannot see any kind of defects, or anything, pixels in, the, in this display. Can you say about how many people worked on this particular design here? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot. It's okay it's, if you don't want to say. It's over 100, I think. Over 100 is... Yeah. Yeah. Actually, impressive that you could do it with that number of people. <laughs> so next, we're going to talk about the 31-inch 4K rollable mm -hmm. uh, OLED. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it, it's the same technology we use in chip printing to make the monitor size, actually monitor size. And then we make them flexible 
also we make them flexible and we can roll it. And once we roll it, it become a, like, a, a, how to say, it's a samba. And you can put it put, put on your desk and you can see some uh, like clock or anything on, on, on the samba. So it looks like a sound bar, but then it turns into a monitor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's another type of flexible uh, the demos I bring here today. What was the biggest challenge in developing that one? Oh, uh, the challenging thing is uh, how to say. It. There's a lot of challenging technology. Yes. We solve like um, like 80 percent of them. I still 20 percent. Like uh, uh, how to say, it? the yield, the the produced yield. It, it, we, we don't know right now because we don't have the production line right now. So we'll have one, probably next year we'll have one. We will check the real, uh, the uh, yield of the, the products next year. And if the yield is good, then probably we can bring it to the market. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I also want you to talk about uh, one other product. It's yeah. a 17 inch IGZO, inkjet printable OLED technology. Yeah, it's also made by inkjet printing. So it's a, it's a foldable notebook. So when, when, when it opens, it's a 17-inch uh, display. And then we can fold it like a notebook. And you can use uh, the top part as a display and the, 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 the bottom part as a keyboard. Yeah, I noticed that you can use it in either configuration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can in two different configurations. So that's very cool. Yeah. 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 All, made, all made by uh, inkjet printing. So you can see that this is the only technology can make the displays from the TV size to the notebook size. Yes. It seems that this is the only technology can succeed on that. Well, I really appreciate you and TCL CSOT bringing all these great exhibits here to Display Week 2023. Thank you so much for Thank your you. time today. Thank you. Well, we're here at Visionox, and I'm talking with CC Lee, who's the Deputy General Manager of Visionox's OLED uh, displays. And they have a very unique process that they call VIP, uh, which actually is a FMM free, no fine metal mask method of depositing uh, organic electroluminescent materials. And CC, can you tell us about this? Sure, yeah. Uh, our new technology name is uh, VIP, stands for Visionless Intelligent Visualization. So here we use a very specific isolator to define the subpixels. Then, uh, uh, since uh, during oh, our that's on the screen right now, isn't yes. it? Yes. So here is the isolator. Okay, we use this isolator to define all of our subpixels. So all of the subpixels will have the subpixel level encapsulation, and then we go to photolithography. So all of the OLED devices will be protected to prevent from the damage during photolithography. So this is a self-aligned process then? Yes, yes, it is uh, uh, fabricated in our existing production line, Gen 6 production line. Are all of the displays that are on dis display here at this show fabricated using this process? Yes, yes, these three demo using this process. Yes. Okay, and you have a lot of other really nice displays here, uh, and I think we should go take a look at those, but first, thank you for showing us this unique method of deposition and encapsulation. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So here we're looking at some of the Visionox displays. Uh, this is a, a rollable laptop display. Yes. And I see this bi-directional uh, dynamic foldable uh, AM OLED display uh, and uh, another rollable laptop. So would you like to tell us about these? Yes. Uh, those uh, proto prototypes are the demonstration for the applications. So we want to uh, use the advantage of Facebook AMOLED to use the in different uh, applications. So like the desktop, uh, rollable desktop, or like this one, this is a stretchable, stretchable display. And then we can have the small mobile size, but with extended active area. You know, I, I'm just impressed by the display quality, uh, not to mention the form factor flexibility. That's, uh, that's truly amazing. Are these fabricated on polyamide substrate? Yes, yes. Okay. And why don't we move around here and take a look at some of these other displays, because I see you're actually demonstrating the rolling in real time, mm -hmm. which, which is incredible. Yes, yep. and uh, we actually we have some uh, production projects using this, uh, this uh, 
phenomenon. Then we can apply it maybe in automobile to save the, the, the size of the product. Oh, I see. So like pillar to pillar construction or uh, to conform to curved surfaces uh, using uh, this kind of technology you could use. We, we will use this one in the control table and then uh, when we want to use the display, they will be uh, extended then to have the full size. But when we don't need to have the display, this one will be reduced. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of SID for coming here and having such a great exhibit uh, and being uh, such a big part of the SID show. That yeah, is our pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you, thank you. Well, we're here at AUO, and I'm speaking with Jennifer Lin, who is the senior AVP of the Advanced Technology Research Center. And Jennifer, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Yeah. And we're looking at these beautiful micro LED displays yeah. uh, that you've brought, and I remember it was like five years ago in, 20, yeah. in 2018, 2018. And you, at the last minute, brought over this prototype that you showed. And I'm pleased to say that five years later, there's so much progress. Yeah. And would really appreciate if you could tell us yeah. and our viewers about what you're showing here at this ex exhibition. Sure. I think first of all, actually, oh yeah, at this time, we have a lot of uh, micro LED displays starting from the different uh, application for transparent. Because as you all know, that uh, actually transparency is the very difficult thing to be achieved for the most of the display technology. However, micro is the best choice. So we are kind of like uh, trying to uh, make every type of uh, applications using transparent. So this time we have at least a transparent micro LED with the black switch. I think this is very important because everybody is envisioned the uh, uh, fi fiction movies that the uh, science fiction that looks very cool. You mean like the Matrix? Like the Matrix, yes. Yeah, from a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. but the reality is, we, do you really enjoy the pictures layer when it's really transparent? So sometimes you want the transparency, but sometimes you really want to enjoy the picture quality. So we put on the black switch underneath and to make it, um, well, switchable. Oh, okay, so you so can... You can Switch the amount of transparency here. Yes, so then uh, it becomes much clearer on the movies. And when you really need to have, uh, well, clarity on the display, it can be moved on. Okay. So this is the one uh, very uh, new uh, transparent uh, micro LED with a black switch that we, we brought. And uh, let me jump to the... Yeah, let's take a look one. at this foldable micro yeah, LED yes. display. This is like a laptop display, it's for like example. Laptop. Yes, let it show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually this one, we are trying to uh, start to prepare for the next uh, application field of uh, notebook. Yeah, and you can see that the list is foldable. Actually, we have been showcasing the flexible uh, micro LED for many years, but we think the, the foldable uh, can really, uh, well, uh, perform micro LED's uh, strength very well because for micro LED, we have no viewing angle uh, constraint at all. Right. So you can see from every angle, the color, the brightness remains the same. So it's perfect for foldable devices. If you really have the, well, our other foldable, well, OLED panels on either notebook or uh, phones, especially notebook scenario, it's really feeling difficult to find the uh, correct uh, pictures at different viewing angles. And this is the use case we think we need to improve by micro D technology. Okay, do you mind saying what kind of substrate this has been fabricated upon? This is on PI. Polyamide. Poly polyamide. Okay. Yeah, polyamide, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're able to mount the micro LEDs reliably on PI. That's Yes. That that's, was a new problem to solve. Well, well, we have been, uh, so since three years ago, we started to demonstrate the flexible. So I think yeah. for that part, it's no problem for us. But the, our new uh, bristle is like we make this uh, to, the bending radius is four millimeter. So you can fully bend. Four millimeter. Four okay. millimeter, yes. Sorry. That's a really pretty display. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. And yet it has very high uh, resolution, 202 PPI, which is very suitable for notebooks. 202 PPI and over a thousand candela per meter squared. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. And look at the black. And uh, also very important thing, you can also try to see the um, uniformity. 
Yeah, uniformity looks great. And then yes. I'm looking at these small fonts and they look very crisp and clear That's because of the contrast. Yes. Yeah. So not only we are showing case the, the, the different possibilities for micro-AD, but we are also showing our capability to mass production. Because if you can now really make one display with a very beautiful picture uh, without the uh, defects, that's really far away from production. So we are having much more improvement than 2018. Yes. You can still find the dots, right? And <laughs> many defects there. But now it's much improved. We this still have room to improve, but uh, I think this lasts a lot already. This looks more like a product than a prototype that's, to me. That is true. That is yeah. true. <laughs> are you going to say when you're going to go on mass production, or is that secret? We are going to have first watch production this year. This year? This year, yes. I didn't wow. bring that because uh, that was shown last year. Yeah. So for the past year, we are working on the production. So it's not really new technology, Whoa. but we are working on the production part. First off, from watch. That's a big accomplishment. <laughs> and uh, yep. here we have a very transparent display. What, yes. what, are we, what are we looking at here? This is a very uh, high resolution transparent because usually you got the transparency high with the lower resolution. And this one we have 163 PPI, yet we still have 555 transparency. So you can see the whole uh, picture quality is good, but have very high uh, transparency, and its peak brightness can achieve 5,000 nits. 5,000 nits. Yeah, so it's uh, very good to put on beside your window. <laughs> still yeah. can see very clearly. And the border is very, very small. That is true. How did, how did you achieve this, like, it almost looks like no border, no yes, bezel, no, yes. no border. That, that is why we think we are need to be uh, targeting, because if we want to really have a good transparent display, it needs to be kind of like invisible when you doesn't really turn on. Yeah. So we tried many ways to uh, like uh, put all the, uh, let's say, the um, wiring and driving transistors or uh, yeah, this is circuits this is, this is inside, inside. Integrated inside gate them. drive, right? Yes, it's actually low scale driver uh, yeah. in the active area. And, and do you have the column drivers down here? Yes, yes. Okay. just the column driver, but all the gate drivers is here. This is huge progress. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I'd like to say both congratulations to AUO thank for you all lot. of this technological advancement and mm -hmm. achievement yeah. and mass production. And also, <laughs> thank you on behalf of SID oh. uh, for bringing this important exhibit mm. to uh, SID. Thank you. It's our honor. Yeah. Every every year I feel very excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, here at Display Week 2023, Tianma gave the opening keynote. Uh, actually, that was today as we're recording this. Uh, and I'm lucky here today to be with Dean Collins and Bob Dunhouse, who are helping to show all the cool exhibits that, that are uh, shown by Tianma. And I'd actually like to start by asking, what are the main display businesses that Tiama is in? Sure. Um, so our focus uh, is primarily on been on uh, small to mid-size displays for automotive. So as you can see here, we've got uh, our products that we're showcasing for the automotive market. Uh, also, uh, industrial is another one of our uh, focus market segments. Uh, and then, of course, consumer. So we have what we call our two plus one plus N strategy. Our two core markets are automotive and consumer. Um, and then the uh, one is going to be some new technologies that we're bringing on for IT. And then the N is going to be the industrial and some of the value add solutions that we do. Okay, and your chairman talked about that strategy in this morning's keynote as well. Yes, yes, we were very honored to have Charles up there for not only for the keynote address today, but also to be able to speak about uh, Tema's 40th anniversary. So you'll notice around here some signs for 40th anniversary. It's our 40th anniversary in the business. Fantastic. Yeah. And I also want to thank you on behalf of SID for being here, being such a big exhibitor and sponsor of everything that we do. Uh, it really helps SID, and we're grateful for your presence here. Yeah, glad to do it. SID is an important organization. I think we've been a long-running uh, member for, for participating in the SID organization and Display Week for many, many years. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the technical aspects of either automotive or industrial? Yeah, let's do automotive let's first, since we're right here. Yeah, yeah automotive yeah. is great because that's an exploding area. The mm -hmm. field is growing so quickly. It is. And I know it's an important market for Tiama also. Absolutely. Very much. What can you tell us about your uh, automotive design ins and what kind of sizes you offer and which types of technologies that you use mm -hmm. for the displays? So we have a couple of different approaches for, uh, for automotive. 
uh, different ways of getting uh, very high contrast, high dynamic displays. Uh, the two on the left here are mini LED. Uh, yeah, look at the black level, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's nice. very, it? very yeah, yeah, dark yeah. blacks, uh, very bright, very dynamic. Uh, two ways of getting there with mini LED. Uh, the one on the left is a uh, mini LED populated on a circuit board, and the one on the right is mini LED populated on uh, glass. This is an LTPS backplane on the glass. Um, difference is, is that uh, there's about 10 drivers, roughly 10 drivers, to do this one, and one to two drivers, the one on the right. So, two ways of approaching uh, Mini LED, very, very dynamic uh, uh, displays themselves. The one, on, the one on the left here is actually uh, kind of a, a dual display, dual cell display. Really? To get, to, to get the deep blacks. Um, so, three different mythologies uh, that we're thinking of in, in automotive currently. Okay, thanks for showing us that. Yeah, you're welcome. So this is a 27-inch uh, uh, curved uh, display, uh, also mini-LED, um, with uh, switchable privacy, uh, as well as what we call our invisible display. So in certain applications, you wouldn't necessarily want to uh, see that there's a display present. So when the display's not energized, it, it shows this, this, this uh, surface pattern. So it, it's kind of an industrial design uh, that blends with uh, its Departure, surroundings, yeah. you know, in the car interior. But when energized, it then shows the display. In this particular case, we've actually separated, you can't see it here, but on the right-hand side, we have a switchable privacy filter that allows it to narrow the viewing angle so that a passenger could view content without the driver being distracted. So there seems to be a lot of focus on driver distraction right now. Well, that's really important. Yes. Yeah, trying to reduce the, the amount of information when it's not necessary uh, to improve the driver safety experience. Mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. make it more immersive you know, when it's in use and they're in the vehicle. So now we're looking at Tiama's micro LED technology. This is a new hot area. It is, it is very hot. Uh, the display you see on the left-hand side is a micro-LED display, but what makes it a little bit different is we're calling this low reflection. And by low reflection, what, we, what we're doing is we're adding a black absorbent material on top of the data lines so that it's, it's reducing the reflection. Um, the one on the, on the right is, uh, we call this our, our uh, adjustable transparency um, um, display. So it's the exact same display, except what we do is we laminate a liquid crystal display on the back of it without a color filter. So we can adjust the light throughput through the back LCD display and it changes the transparency of the display itself. Oh, it's almost like you've got a tunable neutral density filter. Thank you very much for showing these and for allowing us to photograph them too. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Great looking displays. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you. Well, we're here at Nanasys booth, and of course, Nanasys is our sponsor, so thank you to them. And this time, the guy who's normally behind the camera is in front of the camera with me. This is Jeff Urich, uh, who is VP of uh, Marketing for Nanasys. Jeff, what are we looking at here? Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, it's great to be on this side of the camera for once. And uh, we're looking at uh, a demo of the latest Quantum Dot OLED TV technology. That's what we see on top. This is S95C from uh, Samsung Display. It's a really, really beautiful display. It combines OLED technology, emissive OLED technology, with Quantum Dot color conversion on top. So it's got really accurate, really, really vibrant color. And we're showing a comparison here between the S95C uh, which is a very premium TV, and a Sony professional reference monitor. This is an RGB OLED monitor that's used in mastering studios, uh, making content and movies. Oh, and this is a $30,000 display here. Yeah, a little more than $30,000. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Really serious piece of equipment. Uh, it took a, a lot of work to get all these talking to each other and, and working for this demo. And we're showing here another kind of an OLED TV technology 
which is a, a technology that uses a white subpixel in addition to the RGB pixels. And what we're showing here is a loop created by Florian Friedrich. Um, he's a cinematographer based in Germany. And he's showing that uh, as the peak luminance increases and decreases with this pattern, you'll notice some hue shifts and some flickering in these color patches. And that's that white subpixel actively tone mapping and uh, altering the content to try to achieve the right balance of luminance and color. You'll notice you don't see it on the RGB reference monitor or the RGB QD OLED where they have tr true R plus G plus B equals uh, W additive color. So as I take a look at this and we zoom in and look at a close-up view, yeah. I'm seeing some hue shifts as, uh, as the luminance level varies down. That's right. And well, yeah. you're not supposed to see that. I see that on the lower monitor, but I don't see that on either the reference monitor or the uh, QD OLED. That's right. And one of the places you see it most, and we'll have a zoomed in clip here, is in some of the skin tones. And you'll see that, uh, you'll see this in real content where uh, someone's face is coming out of, uh, out of the darkness. And you'll see some hue shifts and some luminance flashing. For instance, as that, that color right there. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, OK. Another great demo that we have, it's a little bit different uh, with this same setup, uh, is showing the BT2020 color gamut. One of the special things about the QD OLED uh, TV is it's able to achieve over 90%, 91.3% in this case, coverage of the BT2020 color gamut. Do you mean by area or by color volume? Uh, well, by area on a chromaticity area. Uh, so yeah, color gamut's not correct. Chromaticity uh, gamut okay. coverage. And you see that in the chart in the upper right. We're looking at actually the um, real-time plot of all the pixels in the content. You can see that this content uses the full P BT2020 color gamut, um, uh, color chromaticity gamut space. And these two TVs are not able to accurately reproduce that. And uh, you'll be able to see colors on this TV that are not possible on uh, the other two displays in this demo. Oh, that difference is striking. Yeah, these are limited to P3, and this is actually reproducing the creator's intent uh, with that full chromaticity gamut, in addition to the peak luminance. Actually, you can see uh, in the bar here, it's showing us the uh, readout of the peak luminance of the brightest pixel in the scene. So you can see we're at 110% of P3, and in that last uh, shot, several thousand nits of uh, peak luminance at the same time. Cool. So Jeff, what are we looking at here? So on this wall, the title of this wall is Mini LED equals Quantum Dots. And this is a message we wanted to share with the industry. Really, almost everywhere we see Mini LED displays uh, in, the dis in the display market, we're seeing Quantum Dots. So 100% of Mini LED TVs in the market today use Quantum Dots. This is a great example here. This is a Hisense U8K. It's actually a pre-release uh, copy that Hisense shared with us. It's going to be coming out here in the U.S. Uh, later this, uh, this summer. And uh, super bright, vibrant picture, over 2,000 nits of peak luminance. Um, great color and uh, tremendous amount of value with the LCD Mini LED Quantum Dot products that we see in the market. Over here we have an ASUS uh, gaming monitor and an MSI uh, gaming notebook. Both of these use very high zone count Mini LED backlights with Quantum Dots. So they've got great color, uh, fantastic peak luminance, contrast from the mini LEDs. And another benefit for quantum dots that we see with mini LED backlights is a very, very fast response time. So quantum dots respond in nanoseconds. So when you have a fast moving object moving across that high, uh, high resolution uh, mini LED backlight, the uh, backlight can move as fast as you want to to keep up with that object. You don't have any color smearing or, or color artifacts related to slow phosphors. So actually a mini LED backlight in the laptop. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty thin too um, and uh, great battery life. Uh, in fact, this is using heavy metal free quantum dots in this case. Uh, we're showing some content again with some analysis showing the chromaticity gamut that there's some great gaming uh, pieces of gaming content that really use the wide color gamut capabilities of these displays and you can take advantage of it. Well, great. It's great to have Nanasys here at Display Week and uh, I really appreciate Nanasys sponsoring these videos and... Uh, Thanks, Fran. Thanks for doing the display show. <laughs> uh, likewise. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm standing here in front of the German pavilion and unfortunately that's about all the time that we have on this episode but I invite everyone to come to Display Week in San Jose in 2024. See you there.